Lawmakers are now in a lame duck session of Congress. Republicans are returning with a new swagger following an election in which they recaptured the Senate and consolidated their hold on the House of Representatives. There is a backlog of stalled legislation to consider, but many expect gridlock, bickering and dysfunction to continue. I've been uh, very disturbed about the, the way the president has proceeded in the wake of the election, whether it was his intervention on a net neutrality, his um, apparent decision to move ahead on immigration uh, with executive orders, the rather ridiculous uh, agreement with the Chinese under which they basically have to do nothing uh, for the next 16 years uh, while we're losing jobs in this country as a result of EPA's overregulation. I had maybe naively hope the president would uh, look at the results of the election and decide to come to this political center and do some business with us. I still hope he does at some point, uh, but the early signs are not good. This is not get even time. I do not intend to run the Democratic caucus like the Republican caucus has been run in the minority. I am not going to do that. We want to legislate. We're not for stalling. We want to move on to the next Congress with a record of accomplishment. The Hills campaign and politics staff writer Cameron Joseph joins us from Washington, D.C. to talk about the action that's already started. Cameron, welcome to Arise America. Thanks for having me. A few things already happened today. Just give us an overview. Well, they got the leadership elections done, and uh, both, on the Senate side, both Democrats and Republicans know who's going to be leading them. Very similar to who have been leading them already, but the majority minority leadership changes are switching over. And on the House side, House Republicans also got their leadership in order. Uh, the big thing on the policy side is Keystone XL, which is moving right now. And it looks like after delaying it for months, Senate Democrats are ready to pass it because they're trying to save one of their own, Mary Landrieu, who's in a very tough re-election battle in a runoff right now. I want to talk about that, but, but let me circle back to uh, the election of the leadership. As I understand it, there were at least four uh, uh, Democrats who objected to Harry Reid uh, maintaining or getting the minority leadership post in, in the Senate. Do you know what that's about? Yeah, there are four red state Democrats. There are folks who are from the same type of states where Democrats just lost pretty conservative areas. And they're basically saying, look, the way you led this party and the way you led the Senate did not work out for us and did not work out for the folks like us. And we want to get stuff done, and we don't think you're the leader to do it. It was more of a protest vote. There wasn't actually anyone standing up trying to run against him. And really, four senators out of the 40-something senators that are back is not a huge number. But there was a lot of dissatisfaction with Harry Reid in this meeting. It was about a four-hour meeting, and a lot of senators were expressing their frustration with how things had gone down in the election yeah, and imagine how things it been was, run before them. Mm -hmm, imagine it was symbolic uh, at the very least. So let's go back and talk about the Keystone XL, uh, XL pipeline. I think everyone knew that this would at least be the, one of the early items that the Republican-controlled Congress would take up, if not the first one. Here's the question, though. What's the likelihood? What, do you, what are your hopes that you hold out that this could actually get signed into law? I mean, I think it's pretty likely that it's going to be. Uh, President Obama has not been super vocal about this. Uh, and it's definitely going to pass the House. It's already passed the House, and they're about to pass it again tomorrow. The Senate's going to vote on Tuesday, and they are most likely going to pass it. There have always been the votes for it in the Senate, but uh, there's some senators are trying to avoid having to take hard votes before the election, and now that's not an issue. Mary Landrieu has been pushing very hard for this. She's a Louisiana senator where oil and gas production is really important, and it doesn't look like she's probably going to be returning to Congress. She's in a very tough fight. But Democrats really don't think that there's any point in blocking it at this point because it's going to pass either now or next year when Republicans can claim credit for it. And they figure they might as well get it over with now and try and help Landrieu. Yeah, just hold their breath and or hold their nose rather and get it done. Let's talk about uh, Senate confirmations, particularly uh, the president's nominee to take Eric Holder's spot as U.S. Attorney General. Of course, that's Loretta Lynch. Uh, mm -hmm. There was some talk that perhaps this Congress would try to push through the confirmation before this their session ends and the new Congress is seated in January. Uh, any chance of that happening? I think it's pretty unlikely. 
uh, for two reasons, really. The first is that Republicans have made it very clear that no matter who the nominee is, they're going to fight like heck to make sure it doesn't happen in the lame duck based on principle. And Democrats are looking at this, and they're thinking Lynch is probably going to be able to pass pretty easily, even in a Republican-controlled Senate. There are some Republican senators that have indicated that they probably would vote for her. And so it's probably not going to be that tough a haul to get her through after the lame duck. So it would really tie things up, and anything Democrats are trying to get done, uh, be it you know nominations for lower-level things like judge positions, judicial ships, that they want to get done. And they think that Lynch will probably happen either way, and that if they try to do it now, it would be very painful for them politically. So it's likely that they're going to do it in the next six weeks. Cameron, t Cameron tell me what you've heard about uh, how we know how the Congress feels if the president uses his executive uh, authority to uh, push through some reform in immigration. Mm -hmm. News cycle today indicates that he's very willing and poised to do that. Do you think that's a bit of saber rattling to pressure them into taking it up? I don't think so. I think that this is his just pure frustration with Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, and him kind of throwing up his hands and saying, well, if you guys aren't going to do anything, I'm going to. And he's basically, you know, the Republicans were accusing him of trying to poison the well in immigration in previous uh, incarnations of this, and he kind of backed off. And at this point, I think he's just not willing to do that. And we're seeing mm -hmm. that in climate change, too, that deal that he just struck with China. Uh, that's a deal that Republicans are up in arms against already. Right. Uh, and they really are powerless to stop him. Uh, you know, they can change some funding things. They can try and block it. But uh, right now, the president's basically said, look, you know, I'm, I'm not facing another reelection, and yeah. I'm out by the next election, and I'm going to do what I can. And basically, you know, you guys can come along. Or if you guys are going to stand in the way, I'm just going to ignore you at this yeah, point. Yeah, going to be so interesting to see. Power, but. Right. I'm sorry I have to cut you off. We're all out of time, but it's going to be interesting to see how they react to that indeed. Cameron Joseph, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.